This video is to show you how to update the work center on a work order uh, in order to move them around to optimize your production workflow. Um, in this particular example, we're going to uh, call it, uh, we're going to base it off of a machine. So a work center in this case would be the equivalent uh, to a machine. Now, first thing we're going to want to do is obviously set it up so that you have access to your work centers and your work orders. I've created three here, three machines, and we're going to pull up the work order and you'll see on the work order, you may get taken to this view. Um, you don't want that for this case. You're going to actually want to go to operations, work orders, list view, and then access it and it'll give you the back end view here. Now you'll see I've added a field here. This is a many to one field related to the work center. So it's related to the, um, it's called MRP, uh, it's called uh, X machine ID. Um, it's on the MRP.work order and the relation, the last little field down there is the MRP.work center, which is the table that this particular field will reference. Now you will see there is a field here in miscellaneous titled work center, which dictates which work center or which machine this particular work order is going to be allocated to. Now, if we want to change this, you'll see it's right now, it is a, a field which cannot be adjusted manually. Uh, we could, if we went into, and I'm, let me just see about this for a second. If we went into here, it looks like we could potentially update the work center. Um, let's see, work center is work center ID invisible, work center ID. Um, so it, we would want to remove the read only associated with that field, but it's okay because you, you don't really want to mess around with the source code if you can't, if you don't have to. So we can update this another way, a safer way. Um, the way we're going to do that is by telling the system, update this work center field to be whatever field is held here. That's the way we're going to do it. So machine, I want to reference the machine value, the machine field in order, to, and, and I want the value of uh, this field to automatically populate as the value of this field. So we're going to go to automated action, create one, and we're going to say um, update work center on the model. It's on the work order. The condition here is we're going to do it on creation and update. And you'll see what we're going to do is we're going to reference all, uh, all instances where the machine is set. So as long as there's a value assigned to the machine, then it will run that update. And you may want to add extra domains here as well, uh, which we may explore later, depending on certain conditions. But as a proof of concept, this should be enough. And what we're going to do is update the record. And the, what we're going to update is the work center field here. And we're actually going to run a Python expression and we're going to say record.x machine id.id. ID. So we're going to say when on the work order, when our work order is created and updated, look for all records where the machine is set. And if you find that record, update that record and particular in particular, update the work center field to pull the machine ID dot ID. So that's how that automated action will run. And now you will see if I go back to my manufacturing app and I look at the work orders and I open one up, not through that view, but again, through list view, whoops, this way. So you can always obviously enable this view. It's just a different view. Um, if we update this field, machine one, you'll see it's machine one. If we change it to machine two, it updates to machine two. And now you'll see in the overview, now it's in machine two. If we open up that work order again and change it to machine three, it will be in machine three. So that's how we can move these things around. Um, if you want to do it through a drag and drop flow, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, you will just group by machine. And we can save this as our um, use by default view as well.
Now this view here, we would have to add the other stages to see them. Um, so that would be, if I go to, for this example, what we'll do is this view and we'll update this to machine one. We'll create a manufacturing order and plan. And now in our overview, we'll have one here in machine three and one here. And now you'll see I can uh, go to my work orders or better yet, you'll see now I have uh, the, I actually want to group these by the machine. Ah, this one's, so I could, I would have to actually run the assignment here. So I could drop it there and it would then update the machine value to one. Oops, work orders and you'll see machine one and the other one will also be machine one. So obviously in order to uh, to have the drag and drop view uh, enabled, you'd wanna see all your machines laid out and you'd wanna be able to drag and drop across those machines. You know, that's all gonna be part of the part of the setup to, uh, to have all your machines laid out here. And if you wanna have it in this view, it is also something that we could look at if you wanted to see the machine up here as well. There is, a, you can also, I mean, this is more admin, but you can add machines here, right? If you wanted to add a machine for you technically could, um, but you may want to re remove this in an actual production environment. The, let me just uh, go through here. So also add that view. And yes, yeah, so you're gonna wanna make sure you get your views down. Let me update that to machine three. And then go to my work order view. So you can see it in list or like this. And then if I take this and of course drop it there, then it would update that record. Oops, it will take me in the same view. So I have two here in machine three. So that's how that can be accomplished. If you have any additional questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks.